Hi, my name is Alexander Ansarud. I'm a plastic surgeon and a hand surgeon. After plastic surgery training, I completed an American Society for Surgery of the Hand recognized fellowship in hand surgery at the University of Pittsburgh. This talk is on mallet finger, a common problem seen in hands. A mallet finger occurs when the tendon responsible for straightening the last finger joint, also called the DIP joint, as seen here in this picture, is injured. As a result, one cannot straighten the last fingertip joint or the DIP joint on uh, our own. If you push with your finger, your other finger, you can straighten it out, but you can't straighten it on your own. And that is the DIP joint, the joint before we call the PIP joint. The causes of a mallet finger are several. One of the possibilities is that the tendon can be torn when the fingertip is forcibly bent. So if one has a strong downward force on the finger, such as a ball hitting the finger, that can cause a tear in the tendon over this DIP region, as shown in the first diagram. The tendon could be cut sharply by a knife in the kitchen or a skill saw. Finally, the bone where the tendon attaches may break right off, and we call that an avulsion, and that's shown here in the bottom picture. A mallet finger is treated by bringing the tendon ends back together to allow those two ends of the tendons to heal. The ends must be in contact for approximately 12 weeks. A splint is used to hold the finger joint straight and bring the tendon ends together. This is an example of a very successful type of mallet splint. The splint can be placed on the top of the finger as seen here, and then held in place with a tape or a elastic bandage. After a period of time, the splint can be removed from the top of the finger and placed on the bottom of the finger to rest the skin and give the a skin on the top of the finger a chance to breathe. What are the risks of using a splint? Uh, the other finger joint, the PIP joint, as we discussed before, must be kept mobile to avoid stiffness. So in this picture here, in the top picture, this splint is too long. The DIP, which is here, is correctly splinted. However, the PIP, which is over here, is unfortunately splinted as well. And if that happens for 12 weeks, this PIP joint can become irreversibly stiff. The skin must be cared for to avoid ulceration as well. Second point here, if a splint is left on or the foam on the splint becomes wet and sits against the skin, one may develop an ulceration as seen in this picture. So the skin underneath the splint needs to be checked. And sometimes the splint needs to be shifted from the top to the bottom of the finger. If the fingertip is bent during this time, even for a second, the 12 weeks may need to start over again. So even when you're changing your splint and checking the skin, you need to keep this DIP joint straight. And what happens after splinting? The tip should be straight. Regaining the bend in the tip may take a while. The top of the finger, all along here, may feel tight for a while because there will be some scarring and stiffness in those tendons. 
and full recovery often will take 6 to 12 months until that tightness goes. Thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Alexander Ansrud. I'm a hand surgeon, a reconstructive plastic surgeon and cosmetic surgeon. If you'd like to see other videos, please like us on Facebook or follow us on our YouTube channel or visit our website, dranzarut.com. Have a great week.